What's up, boat lovers? Today we're working on a 2001 46 foot azimuth with throttle issues on a ZF control system. The customer states that when he puts it in the gear, he doesn't get any audible alarms until he goes beyond the forward detent of gear. So as soon as he does that, the system goes into to an alarm and we're here to determine what's happening. All right, guys, like I said, we try to always come prepared. So this is a replacement actuator if we need it. But I have a suspicion that uh, the timing is off on the crossbar. And it's common on these systems, especially if the shift cable goes bad or the throttle cable goes bad it'll actually throw the timing belt off and the, the cam is no longer equal going up and down both shafts. So this is our starboard side actuator and we're gonna go ahead and open it up. We're gonna determine that the cables are in good shape and if, and if not, we'll go ahead and replace the cables but we're gonna also replace this unit if needed. All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and turn on the engine controls, okay? And we can hear that there's an audible alarm. Now, there's two alarms going on on here. You can actually hear the actual acceptance alarm, and then there's another alarm. Okay, so we're gonna push the button. Now we're only able to take command, but you can see there's no lights illuminated on the starboard side, saying that the starboard side actuator is not ready. So there's either an issue, there's an issue with that starboard side actuator, okay, that could be contributed to the push-pull cables, or it could be contributed to both. So if the timing belt slips and the two gears that go up and down on that crossbar is not aligned perfectly, it would cause this alarm and it could, it's a hit and miss. One day it will work, one day it won't work. So. It just puts a lot of strain because that crossbar is not going up and down equally. It's actually sideways in a portion. So now one side is actually working harder than the other. So we brought another actuator here. We're gonna pull this actuator off and we're gonna inspect the cables and verify that everything is working properly. All right, guys, I've already opened up the box. I've already taken off my shift cable. You can see that you just loosen, take this one off, loosen this one up, and then you move the clamp out of the way and tighten this one back. This one here, I did the same thing. It's loose, but I can't get to the 716, so I'm gonna actually have to take this thing off of the uh, ceiling, put it on my lap so I could grab it uh, and be able to undo the cable from inside the box. But this is the start interlock. I've already pulled this out. That belongs here for, if you guys have any issues with the vessel not starting and it's a control system like this this is your neutral safety switch so if it's in gear that this will eliminate uh, uh this will stop or prevent your engine from starting so but in order for you to test it all you have to do is just take these two wires and put them together either put a jumper between here and here or just put both of them on the same leg and see if it doesn't start after that, guys, you have some other issues with the starting solenoid or the starter issue or some sort of wiring issue. But this is the cable station. This is station one. This is station two. So you need a special tool, a wiggle tool to get inside here and pull these things out. And they are color coded and they have to go back in the same order. Don't mix the stations up because you're able to take command one time, maybe, but when you go back to switch to another control head, it will not do it. So make sure that you put station one with station one and station two to station two, and just take things off, simply. You can, uh, I pulled the back uh, watertight grommets off. This is my power. This is the power for here. Make sure that all the power is off. You can pull this out. Once this thing is out, all the cables are out and you get the special tool to pull these things out. Then you could go ahead and take it off the ceiling and put it on your lap and do whatever work you need to do. All right, guys, I got the unit off. 
Now I want to explain to you about the crossbar. That's the crossbar there. Okay, and I'm going to show you a crossbar that looks good and a crossbar that's bad. It's kind of hard for me to show you directly, but that crossbar is completely balanced. So that did not slip. That's actually in going up and down equally on both of those timing rods. But if you look on this side, I'm going to try to get to you. You can see how one is very close to the bottom over there. And then on the top, look at that rod. See how it's off. So instead of that bar being nice and straight, it's actually bent like this. So now that thing is pushing back and forth in this manner. And it's putting a lot of stress on the motor and overworking the motor. So this actuator is done. But we're going to go ahead and determine that the cable is working perfect. And if it is, then it's a replacement of just this unit here, which we brought. Now, I just also want to explain to you that this is a dual voltage actuator. You could either put 12 or 24 volts to this. So you don't have to order it through us or whoever you get it through. You don't have to order it a specific voltage. It is 12 or 24. So whatever you supply it, that's what's going to work. 12 or 24 guys. All right, guys, we got the old one out and now we're going back in with a new one. So this is my shift cable. This is my throttle cable. I've already tested the cable movement and they're not jammed. So they move freely. So when you put it through the hole here, remember it was upside down. So this side will be the shift. This side will be the throttle. So when you put it through, just make sure that you push it all the way through in a straight line so that you could come out through that hole right there. If you put it in the hole and you start moving it up and down, you could actually destroy the timing belt inside there and then the actuator is no good anymore. So just make sure that you push it completely through the hole out of here and then make sure that the threads go all the way up in here. Then you're able to take this 716 gland nut and tighten it up to a point and then you do the same thing with the other side once you bring it all the way up to that then you're able to lock it down in here sometimes you're not going to be able to do that because you need to turn on the control system and get and make sure that it's in the right direction but since this is our throttle we can manipulate the throttle and we're able to manipulate the shift by moving the cable in and out Okay, over here it's disconnected, but you can see that the cables are moving nice and free. All right, guys, I have my cable started in my gland nut over here, so I, I'm actually turning it now. So I got it all the way back to, so it bottoms out on there. But if you notice, my locking portion is right here, so all I have to do is just move it. Now, I can pull this in and out, and when you see that, that's because that also is not connected. So make sure that you have both ends of the cable disconnected so that you can manipulate this portion here, align it, and then all you have to do is lock it down. Both cables are secured and locked down. You can push it through. And since the other side is not connected, you could actually pull this cable into the gland up here in the front. And then all you have to do is just tighten it down. Once it's down, now you go ahead and do the jam nut on both sides, and then you come back, remount the thing on the overhead, do all the wire connections, and then you can program it to the direction that you need to, and then reconnect it to the transmission and to the governor of the engine. Yeah. All right, guys, so now, I have the unit mounted. I have my push-pull cables connected properly. I have the clamps tightened down. I have them in my gland nut. This is my start interlock. There's no wire orientation that it needs to be. It's either or because it runs in parallel. So 
and the only one that you need to be careful is the power ground is on the top positive is on the bottom over here it all depends on how you're looking at this this is my station one cable this is my station two cable so just make sure that you put it back exactly the same way that you took it out and then once we're got everything connected we'll go ahead and power up the system and then we'll go ahead and program it so that it either pulls or pushes for for the for the direction that is forward or pulls or pushes for throttle so in for this instance for throttle we're pulling the cable so the arm for the throttle needs to be all the way in the downward position right, gonna turn on the power and now you can hear the two audible tones so we're going to take command okay so now both actuators are communicating with the control head so now we're going to go to the engine room and program that starboard side process all right so i got my processor identifier already programmed the port side is actuator one this is actuator two and then i end up programming the number of engines which is two engines now we're doing the neutral identification, which I did as O1, so it's tone upon engaging neutral, D10. So now we're going to E0, which I have E0, and you can see that it's set for 20. We have to change that parameter to 21 to retract, okay? So it's a little bit hard for me to do this, so you push these two buttons down, wait till it flashes and now you actually could come to 21 and you can hear the actuator change okay so now my crossbar is all the way in the downward position so now we need to determine what the shift is push or pull in the right direction so when it comes from factory they're set to two zero this might have to be set to either two zero or two one. All right guys, a good rule of thumb is you wanna look at your good side because we're working on this side. We don't know which direction because the actuator failed on us. So in order for me to determine which way, this side is forward because I put the port side. So most likely since we have reversing props, it's gonna be forward is going to be towards the outside so we could do it another way by just programming and taking a guess at it and if it's wrong we just have to change the programming again so now we know that this cable needs to pull in order to go into forward all right we know that this is going in the right direction without even making any modifications to the programming but in order for us to find out all we have to do is go to Right here it says ahead C5, which is either 20 for retract or 21 to extend. So if we come over here and we go to servo direction, which will be C5. C5 is 20. So 20 here on the direction is pull. So this actuator is actually pulling the cable to go in the right direction. If we wanted to, all we have to do is just change that to 21 if we wanted to push. So this is going in the right direction. So now all we have to do is make sure that we are calibrated now and in going into full stroke. You have to make sure that these are going into full stroke. Otherwise you'll burn up this transmission. Okay, so now that we got the directions correct, so now we're going into the calibration portion of the stroke of the ahead, how far that cable needs to go. It's, you have zero to a hundred percent. This is at 83%. And if you notice on that 83%, I can't pull this thing anymore. If I do, I start binding this, which you don't want to. So you could either go up or down by changing the numbers. If you see they're changing by going up or down. So my 83% is my sweet spot for forward. Now I put the handles into neutral and I do the calibration. I have the starboard side actuator installed. 
tested and calibrated. Now we're going to go up to the main helm and verify that we don't get any alarms when we put it into forward, neutral, and reverse. But we've already tested the stroke on the shift, forward, and reverse, and we already did it at the governor. So this is ready to go. This is set for ID2. The port side is set for ID1. So the port side looks good. Everything on there, that side. So now it's just starting and testing the control system. Press and hold. Station is active. So now we can move them both into forward. I can hear the actuators move. Reverse, perfect. Now we'll throw it forward on both of them. No more alarms on that side, starboard side. So now we come back to neutral, try it in full throttle reverse. Perfect. Throw it forward, exercise it a few times. Okay, so we know that by changing the starboard actuator, everything is working fine now. The cables are good, everything is good. Guys, so if you want to put this in warm mode, all you do is you hold this button down while moving these two handles in forward and neutral detent. But you have to hold these buttons down. You have to hold this button down like this, and then once you hold it down, you move these two while holding that button down into the forward detent right into there. These two lights will start blinking, telling you that you're in warm up mode. Once you come back to neutral, the lights will become solid and you're ready to go but if you put it back into forward it's just going to go into gear forward and then full throttle like i'm saying hold this button down while moving these two into forward then let go of the button and the lights will start flashing all right guys we're here at the bridge and we are testing this station out verifying that everything here is working perfect full throttle with no alarms neutral full throttle reverse with no alarms neutral so in order to take command the same thing you just hold the button down make sure the handles are in neutral and the indicator lights will come on letting you know that that head is ready to take command same thing you go to the lower station you hold it down the two red lights are on that means your station is in command so that's the simple and you don't have to hold the button down or anything like that, push it two times, three times. All you do is you hold it down until the two lights come on. That makes that station come alive. Guys, this is a wrap for this 46 azimuth. We repaired the starboard actuator and we got all the stations to work properly along with the push pull. We didn't need to replace the push pull cables because they were in good condition, but we made sure that they were calibrated right so that the customer won't have any other issues guys if you have any questions please let us know in the description below and like and subscribe